Well, I finally got my garage doors installed. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through those steps that it took to install them. So stick around, it's coming right up. Okay, I got my door flipped back over. Um, here's the bottom, and on the bottom edge go these bottom brackets. When you break them apart, you might have to break off a little tab that's left over, like so. So these are left and right, so that one goes over there. Left, go on this side. They're marked right with an L and an R. And there's little slots on the end that these little tabs slide in. And then slide up. Number 14, sheet metal screw. I found it so much easier using the impact wrench with a 5 6 or a 7 16 uh, bit in it to run all these screws in and I did uh, my other door yesterday and this battery held up for the whole project so I'm really happy with this with this Bosch drill and impact so for the bottom section there's going to be uh, hinges marked number one and there'll be an arrow on them facing up so this is the top of this section and the pre-drilled holes ready to go So this 10 foot wide door is going to have three hinges across each section. Okay, I got it centered in the opening. Now I want to check and see if it's level. That is right on. Okay, the instructions say to drive a 16 penny spike on an angle to hold these in place as you go up. But I'm going to use those as this big uh, wafer head screw. That just keeps it from falling back in and I'll put one of these on each side on every section as I go up. Okay, for this, the second panel, you use the hinges marked number two on the end, but the one in the middle is still a number one hinge. Then I'll just continue with the third and the fourth. So on the last section, you may have a strut that goes across the top and the top bracket has to get attached instead of a hinge. So there's several different like little pre-punch holes here. So make sure you look at the instructions close and get it lined up at the right spot.
There's three different size brackets. Smallest one goes on the bottom. This one's marked left. This one's marked left. Make sure the, the bolts go through to this way. So for my instructions, I said for a two inch door to use these two holes. So I think for a, a skinnier door, you'd use those two holes instead. Because my door sits out further a little bit. Uh, two little scraps of half inch plywood. One to put under the track because you want to leave the track up off the ground about a half an inch. And then the other one is to space the track about a half inch away from the edge of the door. So those work out just right. I'm going to pre drill the uh, lag bolts. Right hand side here. Same for the other side. Okay, I have the flag brackets here. gets bolted through with these little carriage bolts. So everything I'm lagging into here for these brackets is there's a a four by six post behind this plywood. You may have a one piece bar or you might have to use the coupling to put the two together. <sighs> so here's where things got confusing for me. So it says to lay this on the ground and measure how long it is. But the problem is when it's just laying here, it can be, kind of wants to spring back out. About 64 and a half. About 63 and three quarters. So it's about a three quarter inch difference. So we can just lay in there and if you just kind of push it together. So I think you want it like that, the compressed length. And that's what I did on the other one and it seemed to work out pretty well. So my spring is a left hand spring, which means it's going to be in the left side of my bar or the left side of the door. And then the spools for your cables are marked left and right. So that's the right that's marked with black paint. This is the left marked with red paint. My easy torque uh, winder goes on this side and the bearing goes on the right side. And what you have to be careful with on this bearing is what I found is that it slides in further if you put it this into your slots in the flag bracket. If you put it in this way, it doesn't seem to want to go all the way. 
and I don't know if that's it doesn't really say that in the instructions but I had to pull it out and turn it around because it wasn't sitting in all the way so this goes in that orientation on the right hand side so this goes towards the outer part of the door So this has spots where the spring holder snaps in place. Like so. And then the spool. So the larger part goes towards the outside like that. Now this can get set right up into place. Alright, a little closer look. So I pushed the spring tight down to there and I measured the measurement when it was on the on the uh, sawhorse. So that's the same measurement and then they want you to have this, this faint black stripe here. They want it facing out, which it is. You can spin the, the easy torque if you need to, to get it facing out. And now I'm going to tighten these set screws. All right, I've got my cable attached to the bottom of the door. I have to get it wound on the drum. So you just stick it in the little slot and then wind it up. There's a set screw on the drum. I want to get the drum centered inside that flag bracket so it doesn't rub. And once it bottoms out, I can go about a turn. And then it says to wind this about a turn to get, keep tension on that cable. My door is eight foot high, so the chart and in the instructions says to wind this 12 and three quarter turns. I've already wound it once when I tightened this up. So what I'm gonna do is just count how many times this green paint comes around. So mat one. Yeah, I'm at 10 of my batteries dead. I'll call it right about there. Okay, now I need to lift the door about three inches and tighten the other set screw on the cable drum. On both sides. For the complete playlist for the pole barn build, check out this card up here. And for a video that YouTube thinks you might want to watch, check out this card down here. See you in the next one.